As if we didn't have enough things to worry about down here on Earth, we still got stuff up in space. Not just the economy that's coming for you. Nope. Let's get into it. Solar flare. Solar flare! Starting off our list today, we have low energy radiation, which might not sound like much, but it's kind of a big deal. First off, however, let's start with the basics. What is a solar flare and how do they happen? Well, solar flares occur when the intense magnetic fields of the sun become tangled up in one another and then they snap back into place, causing a drastic reaction. When solar flares occur, the energy released is more than a million times greater than energies released during the largest mega volcano eruptions on Earth. So it's pretty intense. What happens is kind of like a fiery burp from the sun that sends energy, light, and high speed particles into space. And because a lot of these particles have high levels of radiation, they can disrupt things like high frequency radio devices and GPS systems. And these particles can also cause humans who just so happen to be in certain parts of the atmosphere, such as the troposphere and the stratosphere at the time of the solar flare, to experience low energy radiation, which can cause severe burns as well as tissue damage. So next time you decide to hop on an airplane, maybe apply some sunscreen first. Speaking of airplanes though, if a solar flare was big enough, it could cause some serious chaos up in the air, as if flying wasn't already nerve wracking as it is. Apparently solar flares can cause issues with planes communication systems as well, so that's comforting to hear. So because of all the radio disruption a big solar flare can cause, it could have a situation where radio communication between aircraft and air traffic control gets messed up, and pilots rely heavily on clear and reliable communication to navigate airspace safely, receive instructions from air traffic controllers, and communicate with other aircraft, mainly to avoid crashing into each other. So this would be a big problem. Imagine a solar flare so intense that communication is completely wiped out, leaving pilots basically flying blind, crashing into each other and then raining hell down on us from above. It'd be like the uh, Treehouse of Horror Simpsons episode. Life's a glitch, then you die, where all the planes start crashing into each other. We've mentioned that one before on one of our many Simpsons videos. Watch one of those after this one. All right, so we talked about what could possibly happen if you were on an airplane during a massive solar flare, but what if you were aboard the ISS, or worse, outside of it? As I previously mentioned, those in the troposphere and stratosphere run the risk of experiencing low level radiation. Considering the fact that those two layers of our atmosphere are the lowest layers of our atmosphere, can you imagine what would happen to those aboard the ISS sitting in the thermosphere, just one layer down from the exosphere, which connects our atmosphere to space. Well, I'll tell ya, it wouldn't be pretty. Anyone outside of the international space system at the time of the solar flare would burn up and die pretty much instantly. The good thing is, those inside would survive as the cosmic radiation and charged particles would simply roll right off the hull of the vessel as though the event was nothing but a mild rainstorm. However, if the flare knocked out their communication satellites, that would be a different story. But I'll be back after James. In 774 CE, Earth experienced what scientists think was an absolutely monstrous solar storm known as the Miyake event. It was detected by Japanese researchers studying cedar trees. The tree rings showed this massive spike in carbon 14. The scariest part is that this solar flare would have been 10 times more powerful than the Carrington event of 1859. More on that in a bit, which caused some pretty serious problems at the time. So, you can only imagine how intense this one would have been, and without the advanced technology we had today, people wouldn't have known what the hell was going on. There would have been some unusually intense auroras and forest fires. But if a solar storm as powerful as this one were to hit today, the data reveals that it could cause what is referred to as an internet apocalypse. All wireless technology would be wiped out, and on top of that, more forest fires. Now, the chances of one as powerful as this hitting in the next decade are apparently low, about 1%, but that's still 1% too high for my liking. All right, as promised, let's get into how an intense solar flare might negatively affect our satellites. Well, there are one of two ways a solar flare leading to a solar storm might lead to satellite issues. One, the satellite becomes highly charged, causing a high current to be admitted throughout, causing damage to components imperative to proper satellite function. And two, the high energy particles expelled from the solar flare could collide with the satellite, causing 
doing damage to components necessary for proper satellite function. Two different paths, same destination. Satellites at risk for this kind of damage include Earth orbiting satellites, specifically those in high geosynchronous orbits, meaning the ones that orbit around the Earth at any inclination in the span of just under 24 hours, which are generally our most important communication satellites. So sorry astronauts, if that happens, you might just be SOL along with pretty much everyone else on Earth. We've touched on radio and communication disruptions already, but what kind of effect would that have down here on the ground? Well, one of the biggest issues, radio failures would interfere with emergency services, exacerbating already critical situations. Imagine firefighters battling a raging wildfire, unable to communicate with each other or receive updated instructions from command centers. Uh, just like pilots up in the air, first responders rely on their communication with with each other. For paramedics rushing to the scene of an accident or medical emergency, reliable communication is essential for receiving vital info about the situation and coordinating with hospitals. Without it, response times could be delayed, medical treatment may be compromised, time is of the essence in these emergency situations. Same deal with law enforcement. Officers could struggle to coordinate or request backup, putting both officers and the public at even greater risk. And if the solar flare was destructive enough, there could be more emergencies than usual. For example, let's say people started looting during a massive power outage. We now turn to Hannah. Yep, it's power grid failure. If you've seen any of my videos on doomsday cults or the end of the world, you might remember that one of my personal biggest fears is that the world ceases to function as a result of power grid failure. I mean, it would be chaos. No internet, no heat, no AC, no water, no electricity in hospitals keeping people alive, no electricity in national security centers protecting our countries. Pure chaos. And pure chaos breeds pure destruction. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Because what I need to be doing right now is explaining to you how this is a very real possibility. So that way, we can freak out together. In the event that a solar flare reaches Earth, the geomagnetic storms caused by the flare, which can absorb and reflect radio frequencies, disrupting communication and satellite systems, as we've said, could negatively affect significant amounts of the power grid, or possibly if the flare is big enough, take out the power grid altogether. And it's happened before. Well, kind of. In 1859, the largest recorded solar flare to hit Earth caused massive disturbances in our magnetic field and disrupted telegraph systems, causing them to spark and catch fire. The incident was named, as James mentioned, the Carrington Event. Now, luckily, we haven't experienced anything like this since 1859, but just recently, on May 10th of 2024, which is this year, we experienced a pretty big solar flare, albeit not as big as the one that triggered the Carrington event. Instead of fires, we got the northern lights, but still, any bigger, and we could have seen our laptops, phones, televisions, tablets, and power lines going up in flames, and our electricity going down. Speaking of electronics going up in flames, let's talk about electronics going up in flames. Smartphones, laptops, TVs. They're pretty delicate machines. If a gigantic solar flare sent out a burst of energy, it could create a powerful enough electronic current in the Earth's atmosphere strong enough to sneak into our power lines and even into the wires that connect our electronics to the outlets. Our electronic devices just aren't built to handle these sudden surges of electricity. It's like trying to pour a gallon of water into a shot glass. When too much electricity flows into our devices, it could overload them, frying their circuits and damaging them. Your device might suddenly stop working altogether or it could start acting strangely, freezing, glitching. Uh, fires could also start. Imagine that power bar you have right next to your bed with every device imaginable crammed into it. Your phone charger, lamp, laptop charger, AirPod charger, secondary smaller, mood light. Suddenly a big solar flare happens and your power bar gangbang monstrosity is now a muddled ball of toxic fire. Next thing you know your bed is up in flames and you start wishing you listened to that d-bag on the internet preaching about how minimalism is the way to a happier and more fulfilling life. All of that could happen and is very likely. And medical equipment could also be damaged. That 
Next up, let's talk about the negative effects solar flares could have on animal behavior and the possible correlation between solar storms and beaching. As you might be aware, many animals such as turtles, bees, birds, lobsters, rodents, and some whales use something called magnetoreception to help navigate their movements and migrations, which is amazing, but also pretty nerve wracking for scientists who have noticed a weakening in the Earth's electromagnetic field over the past several years. So what does this have to do with solar flares and solar storms? Well, those two things disrupt the magnetic field of the Earth as clouds of charged particles are introduced into the atmosphere. When this happens, the internal compass of animals relying on magnetoreception becomes skewed, which scientists have theorized leads to confusion and a lack of direction in specifically sea animals relying on this sense, causing them to beach themselves at a much higher rate than usual. And finally, we have pipeline corrosion. We've talked a lot about the negative effects solar flares can have on electronics, but apparently pipelines could be damaged as well. So because solar flares can mess with the Earth's magnetic field, generating electronic currents that flow through the ground, pipelines buried underground can kind of act like giant antennas picking up these electronic currents. And when these currents flow through the pipeline, they can cause something called stray current corrosion. The electric currents from the solar flare can corrode the metal in the pipe, weakening it over time. Weakened pipelines can spring leaks or even burst, which is not only costly to fix, it's also dangerous, obviously. Plus, if a pipeline carrying oil or gas springs a leak, it can lead to environmental damage, like contaminated soil and water, also putting people at risk. Solar flares do technically happen like pretty much every day, but they're pretty minuscule and that is what creates the aurora borealis, but this is no longer an informational video. <laughs> I don't know why I'm still telling you things. <laughs> so we had so much we wanted to talk about in this yeah. video. Yeah. Oh well, uh, maybe a part two? All right, with all that said, I've been your host, James. I've been your host, Hannah. We'll catch you in the next one. That we will.